the edge with April Mahoney brains. Here, this is the place where the conversation is pointed, the guests are sharp, and the responses are never dull. <laughs> Welcome home, brains. Coming to you straight from San Diego, California. Let's welcome our host, April Mahoney. That would be great. Because I want you to have all things wonderful, Queen. Thank you so much for being here with me and my brains, uh, Rosetta Cotty. Yes. Straight from Canada Brains. Look at that. They got beautiful black women in Canada. Oh, yes. And they are doing big things. They are doing manifestation. They are doing neuro linguistic programming. They're talking hypnotherapy. They're making it happen. And I want to talk to Rosetta and find out, you know, they got all these key strategies on what we should do. But why are people stuck? Why are they doing it? Why are they stuck? So we're going to find out that and more with our guest today, Rosetta. She likes to go by Rosetta Q here yes. on the edge. Thank you so much and welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me here. Absolutely. Absolutely. There's so much going on in the world right now, girl. It's on overload. We were just talking about something. You was going through your phone and you were on overload because you have so much information. People have so much information, but information is nothing. It's not power. It's only power when it's applied. Would you agree? Oh, 100%. 100%. We're all working on, you know, as you were saying, overload right now. And that's why it's important for us to declutter and to take a break from all that's going on. Because we're always, um, we know we're taking in all this different information and all these different things that's going on in the world right now. It's just um, our brains are being bombarded nonstop by information from the phone you know, or computers, you know, all, everything. Or your um, kids, or your romance, or yeah, just exactly. being distracted. You know, it's a big distraction too, Rosetta, is ugliness, okay? That doesn't apply to me and you right now, but, but <laughs> no, real ugliness. Some people like to stay stuck in that mindset, and I don't understand why that is. How can they break that cycle? I think it's fear. What do you think? You know what, there's, there's, it's, fear is not the only thing that's keeping a lot of people stuck in that mindset. There's, um, there's many different factors towards that. Um, and, and some of the factors, um, some of the things that keep people stuck has to do with, um, sometimes it, it has to do with their childhood and their upbringing and they're holding on to things from the past that they can't seem to let go of. And that will keep them stuck, you know, whether it's, um, resentment or anger or you know just just different negative emotions like that um that will that keeps people stuck and again people there are people that they they have no idea how to get out of it they know they're stuck but they're not sure how to get past that so they um so they just remain stuck i see so many people that are stuck and honest to bob they want to stay stuck Yes. For example, people that are, you know, got that keyboard courage on social media. They want to be mean. They want to be ugly. They want to have an opportunity to spill venom out of their mouth. So what I'm hoping that we can do is, you know, learn to really use some of that neuro-linguistic programming, use some of those hypnotherapy techniques to do the mind shift. Now, you are originally from Jamaica, correct? Yes, that's correct. How did you find this type of work? And how did you find uh, that you wanted to live and move to Canada? Okay, so um, okay, so let me just uh, give you a short history. Um, let me tell you about my story. So okay, so I am number six of seven children. Oh wow! Um, I um, I was born in a um, in a in, in a home where my dad was the only one who worked, and I was born in really really bad um, poverty. So, so um, you know, it, I, I remember the nights going to bed hungry and, you know, not being able to go on school trips or not being able to uh, always wearing the hand-me-down and, and not being able to do, do much, right? So I remember, um, so my parents thought that, you know what, it would be great if they would um, send me to live with my aunt because it would help them out. 
So I went to live with my aunt. I stayed with her for a few years and she got tired of me. She sent me to live with my grandparents who got tired of me, sent me to live with my uncle. So, and you know, and this keep going on for years. So I was always being passed around from home to home. Like at, and at such a young age, you, you like, I didn't understand what was happening because you know, I, I was a perfect child. You know, I was doing everything right, obeying the rules, doing all this, but yet no one wanted me. Nobody seemed to want, it, um, want me around. So eventually I ended up in boarding school alone. So I became my own mother and father. I became my own, you know, I, I learned to love and nourish myself and um, take care of myself. And that's when I decided that, you know what, if I wanted better out of life, I would have to do it myself because there's no one for me to depend on but me. Right. I, I have to go out there and do it myself. So I started at a very young age um, to manifest the life that I wanted. I started using my imagination, even, but back then I had no idea what I was doing. Wow. Well, because my world, my physical world was so chaotic and I, I hated it. So it was easier for me to go into my mind and to just to, because it gave me peace. And it gave me comfort. So I would just imagine the life that I want, never being hungry, always being able to travel, living in the nice house, you know, even taking care of my parents who, in my mind, didn't want me. Mm. But I still wanted to help them. So I just kept imagining my life the, the way I wanted, um, the way I wanted to live. And, and, I, um, and I kept praying. Because the, the only thing that I had was I had my God with me. That's because right. even though no one wanted me, God still wanted me. And, and never you left me. You God at, a, at an early age, at a young age. I did. I did. And, and throughout all that, all that's, that, that's where all my strength came from. So I kept imagining the life that I wanted. And I kept praying for, for God to, to help me and to... to uh, to send someone to help me. And, um, you know, this kept going on for years and years. And then he, um, I met this guy, this wonderful guy who uh, came to Jamaica and um, he's now my husband. And we started uh, working um, together. We built our business, moved to Canada, you know, and it's 21 years later. <laughs> wow, that's an amazing story. So through all of your trials and tribulations, you started also in hypnotherapy. Not only did you want to manifest, but you also wanted to dig into the subconscious mind. Tell me a little bit about the work you do. Yes. Well, um, so yeah, I, I hypnotherapy, hypnosis is it's amazing because with me, I had so many blockages that I had to remove. Because of my childhood, the thing is with, with, with these, um, these past events and these past pains and hurts and, and, and things that, that you go through, if you don't deal with them, if you don't get rid of them, they keep reoccurring in your life in different ways, mm -hmm. right? So with me, what was happening is my abandonment issues kept coming up from my childhood. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and that turned into anger and that turned into resentment and all different things like that. So I had to dig deep into my subconscious mind to get rid of those. And that's where hip hypnosis came in. And that's, and hypnosis helped me so much. I decided to, um, to study it and to um, help people with it. And, and, and it's been helping a lot of people because it helps you eat, because hypnosis work on such a subconscious level it, it, go, it bypass the conscious mind, right? And, and it works directly to, we work directly with the subconscious and we're able to clear those blockages. And, right. and um, so, so the person can move past whatever it is that they're trying to move past. How do you find that black people are receptive to um, hypnosis? I know, I know a lot of people that they're not with that. They you think know, that, well, they, again, they think it's a sideshow, you know, that yeah. they're going to have you quacking like a duck or, you know, barking like a dog, some stupid stuff. They really don't understand the relaxation. I had another guest on my show uh, from Canada as well. She uses uh, hypnotherapy on individuals that are dealing with dementia. 
uh, and going back into that place. There's a lot of people that go through regression therapy to really deep, you know, past life experiences and all yes. of that. So yes. how do you find that, you know, as a cultural thing? Because that's not easy to introduce. You know, we don't go for a lot of stuff like that. No, it's not easy to introduce. And yes, and a lot of people, it's not just black people. A lot of people just, they are, um, they, because of how TV portrayed it, they think, yeah, it is a sideshow, but honestly, it works so much. It works so much. So, and it, it, it is amazing because um, some of the people that I've worked with, with hypnosis, like they have been in therapy for, for a long time and therapy takes years and years to uncover. But with hypnosis, after eight sessions, a few sessions, you start noticing all the different changes. So it works much faster. And for, um, to answer your question in regards to um, you know black people, it's just it's just a matter of you know who who you're talking to and I think it's, I think it's exposure. I think it's exposure, and I think that it is because it, it's not a cultural norm. No, I think that it's fear. I think yeah. that it can really resonate if you, if there's someone that is going to take you to a place that you've never explored before. That's like me. I don't do Uber. I have never been in an Uber, okay? <laughs> because I'm just, you know, I'm just of the old school. I don't like just getting in anybody's car, taking me anywhere. So when somebody is in your mind, in your brain, and they're taking you somewhere, you got to pass the sniff test, baby. They got to no like, trust you, all of that. And so especially with our culture, it's, it's a lot deeper. And I'm hoping that we, you know, we expand ourselves and open up our horizons because there's a lot that we're missing out on. You know, oh, we can get rid of some of that generational trauma. Exactly. You know, that's what's going on. You definitely. did a really interesting interview uh, with a young woman or was on your channel. And you talked about mirror, mirror. Oh, yeah. You know, mirrors are not just for reflection, but they're also a place to make corrections. Yes. That you, you know, you get yourself together and you make sure that it's okay. When you look in the mirror, what do you see now? When I look in the mirror, I see a very strong, beautiful, dedicated, loving, compassionate woman who is just, you know, has so much hope for everyone out there. Because I, I see that I could come out, I could change myself into becoming this person, then I, I know that everyone else can do it. Do you really think everyone else can do it? I don't think everybody else can really do if it. If they really want to, they can. If, if they, they want to. If they really want to change, they can. But of course, you and I can't force people to do anything. We can't change people. People right. have to change themselves. We can only teach them and we can only show them how. Right. But unless they want it and are willing to accept it and put in the work, then it, nothing's going to happen. So people will have to want to change. Because they want to suppress it. They want to submerge it. They think that it's just going to disappear and go away. Like, yes. But it's it, not. <laughs> it, doesn't, it doesn't work like that. There, and there are a lot of people out there like that who will just, you know, will take things and sweep it under the rug and, and just, you know, just keep doing that. But they don't understand that when you do things like that, eventually it's going to come back and it manifests itself in different ways, whether it's physical illness whether it's, you know, mental, emotional, whatever it is, it, it manifests itself in different ways in your body. Right. So we, we must, it's, it's critical for us to deal with these emotions and these, um, these things that are keeping us back and that are holding on to us and that are holding, keeping us stuck. Well, you really answered the second part of my question because I asked you about the reflection in the mirror, but also the corrections that we make in the mirror. So thank you so much for that. You've got seven principles. I want to dive into a few of them. Uh, one of them is like declutter. Brains, make some room. I do a thing called a brain dump. I do it maybe every four or five days. I get a pencil and a piece of paper and I just write whatever it could be my grocery list it could be a bill i owe it could be somebody i need to call but i'm taking all of that information out of my brain and i'm offsetting it somewhere else so that i'm creating more capacity and more space you want to talk you know you definitely want to speak to that uh you got to get your space clear to make room for abundance especially when you're manifesting am i right 
Definitely, 100%. Um, yes, yeah, so so decluttering our mind. You know, we were always hearing people say declutter your space, but it's important for us to declutter our mind too because we're always getting bombarded with all this information. So decluttering your space will help you feel like you're decluttering your mind because, you know, you, you don't want to come home to, uh, after working eight hours, 10 hours a day, you walk in your house and there's dishes piled up in the sink. Right. There's, uh, you know, clothes all over the couch there, you know. So decluttering your space will, will help you to feel like you're decluttering your mind. Mm -hmm. And um, it will, because you'll come home and you'll feel more relaxed. So you can continue, you can go ahead now, you can make your dinner, you can spend time with the kids, you don't have to clean up the house, you don't have to do this. So it's important for us to throw it all the, you know, all the things that are no good anymore. You know, right. we try to hold on to so much in our lives. We try to hold on to things that are no good to us, that are, that are useless, and that need, we need to let go of. So, um, so it's important for us to let go of the old magazines, you know, throw those out, throw but those you know, that you'll never you know use. You why they do that? Uh, I was talking to a family member that openly and honestly told me that they were a hoarder. I knew they were a hoarder, but to actually hear those words come out of their mouth was amazing. And I said, is that a part of the depression? Oh, no, I'm not depressed. I'm not depressed. Absolutely. Yeah. But do you feel that you don't have enough? Do you feel that you're insignificant? Do these things give you power? Do they give you prestige? What is it about the clutter that makes you feel safe and secure? Couldn't answer that question. So now they're going to do the deep diving. And I think that that's so important. You also oh, yeah. talk about keeping a journal. Someone just sent me a journal in the mail that was so beautiful. And I've journaled ever since... I was a little girl. And I don't just journal with words. I journal with pictures. Uh, you know, sometimes I'll go through a magazine and I'll let it tell the story for me. Um, I journal with numbers. I know that, that that's, that's a whole nother show. I'll tell you guys about that later. But there's a lot of things um, that people want to keep. But journaling is also important because it's a way, again, of reflecting, going back to see where you were, creating a roadmap of where you want to be, and then look at your progression. Would you agree? Yes, 100%, because journaling helps you to get things out of your head. Because we have so much information in our, in our head that, you know, you know, it's good to write them down and just then that way it frees up brain space, frees up space. So keeping a journal and, um, you know, uh, writing out what's going on, how your day went, went and just different things like that will help you to, it frees up a lot of space for you because we don't have to hold on to everything and right. we can't hold on to everything, right. you know? So it's because good. We don't have the capacity. No, we don't. Go ahead. Right, to my next question. Let go of the past. How mm -hmm. do you let go of the past? See, I'm, I'm, me, I'm not that kind of person. I don't live in the past, but I hold on to it because I want to make sure that either this is a place that I want to journey back to or I want to stay away from. But I don't let it kind of navigate uh, my course. That's good. It's good. And, and why I say let go of the past is that too many people live in the past. Mm -hmm. Too many people are stuck in the past and they can't move forward. So, so letting go of the past, you know, because people have, a, too, there are so many people that have a drawers of all those, their past mistakes, all their past pains, you know, the past hurts, all, all those things that happened to them in the past, or it could be negative or it could be good, you know, all the good old days, and they just stay stuck there and they can't move forward past that. So, um, so they don't see the present and they don't see all the new opportunities and all the new blessings that are wanting to come in because they're stuck back, way back there 10 years ago, 15 years ago, 20 years ago, and even, you know, um, in the past. So it's important for us to empty out those drawers, keep the ones that are good for us, and just let go of the ones that, you know, are no longer serving us. You said something else, too, that I totally agree with. Limit your information and edit and filter your information regularly because the sources of information are so convoluted now that you can't really tell fact from fiction. You've got to go 
two or three layers deeper to find out if this is true or if that's not true. That can be with your relationship, that could be with your job, that can be with your religion, that can be with your political association. There's just so much, uh, I like to call it trickery, out yeah. there. So how do you suggest people really start doing that? Because I really have to tell myself, you know, I even set an alarm on my phone that at this particular time of day or whatever, I'm shutting these devices off. Yeah. Yes, that's, that's a good way, 100%. I do that too. It's important for us to shut the phone off, turn it off completely, the same with our computers and the TVs, you know, and the radio. It's good to just shut off every, every all of these um, technology and just spend some time with yourself because it is important for us to do that because we're constantly getting bombarded by information. And yeah, because some of the information that we're getting... It's not true. And that's why we have to make sure that the information that we're accepting and believing is coming from a relevant source. And we're not just believing what we, what we hear, or what Jane says, or what Tom says, you know, without digging deeper into it and, um, and, and, and seeing um, if this information is relevant and if it's right for us or not. Because not because someone says something and believe it so much, that means it's good for you. Right. And you should believe it and you should go by it, right? Right. So it's the same, it's right. just, just like we were talking about religion and all that stuff. And not because I teach you something that doesn't mean it's good for you. You take what's that, the part that's good for you and that's benefit for, beneficial for you. And then, and then you use that towards you and you leave the rest. Right. Now, you know, that's like, I, I'm just using this as an example, Brains, but biblical texts, you know, you get up there and you get excited, you know, are you at church or are you in church? You're excited about the pastor and he's up there and he's got everybody all excited and he's giving you or she's giving you their interpretation of the word mm -hmm. and you never read the text for yourself. Exactly. Never made that personal connection. Exactly. You know, it's like people in business. You wonder why you broke? Because you never looked at your bank statement, okay? You never signed your own check. Yeah. You were never present. You wonder why your partner's cheating on you after 20 years and, you know, because you was never frontline trying to connect, trying to be in that denial. We have to be able, number one, I believe, before we can do anything, is to take ownership. Oh, why? What that looks like. If it's good, bad, or indifferent, okay, own who you are. And instead of being so busy trying to change somebody else, you might want to try to look at yourself first. Yes. Exactly. We've all got issues. Exactly. No one, we're, you know what, none of us perfect. We all have our own issues. And I always say this um, in my classes, uh, it is important. We can't change other people. We can't change our spouse. We can't change our kids. We can only change ourselves and they will notice the change within us. And then that will hopefully propel them to make the changes within themselves. But, but yeah, but we, 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 we can't. Um, and that's, and you're so right too, too many times we're focusing on changing other people or trying to get other people to love us and to accept us instead of us accepting and loving ourselves just the way we are. Exactly. Exactly. I totally agree with you. What, what are some things that bring you your greatest joy? My son. Oh, how old is he? My, he's 17. He's actually in oh, university oh, okay. this year. So, um, yeah, he's one of my, um, he's my biggest and greatest joy. Um, my business, um, my husband, my parents, um, I'm traveling. I love traveling. I know. It, so. it put a damper on me. I'm not going nowhere in that Petri dish. I'm a nervous wreck. <laughs> and I love to travel. Even by train, you know, we were supposed to be on a cruise ship right in the middle of the pandemic. I was like, oh, my God, that would have been awful. What, uh, are, what are some things that bring you to tears? What, what, what are some of the challenges that you still face? Um that will bring me to tears is looking at um you know sometimes i'll look at even my family members i have family members and you know even though you try to um to teach them you know you say um to teach them how to um 
to be live a more fulfilling life and to be more successful and they're not um they're not take you know when you try to help your family they never listen to you they want to listen to other people instead of you well, yeah they have a lack of ambition but you know you're again you're a mere reflection of what they may want but sometimes that's envy sometimes that's insecurity yeah. that that resentment you know rather it be a family member or a, a friend of me a best friend yeah exactly or still people kind of fall into that deep hole what are three things that you cannot absolutely live without Oh my gosh, three things that I can't absolutely live without. Um, I don't know. I can live without food. <laughs> no, I can't live without food. I can't. So food is one, water, and um, oxygen. <laughs> it's the simple pleasures. One, two, three. Food, yeah, water, like, oxygen. Yeah, I like everything else, I will be fine without <laughs> If you were to go to the mall right now and buy yourself a present, what would you buy? What would I buy or who would I buy? No, what would you buy for yourself? Oh, for myself, oh my gosh, I this, this one is easy because I love shoes. So I'm always <laughs> buying shoes. And um, I, I love Louboutin shoes. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so I'm always there. I, I will go shopping and my son likes shopping too. So we'll go shopping. I'll go with him and his girlfriend and we'll just shop and it's, okay. it's fun. So you take all those things. You take the things that you can't live without, food, water, oxygen. You take your ability to have a positive mindset and want to help others. You take the fact that if you could have unlimited resources and go buy yourself a, a gift, you would do that. How do you instill all of these wishes and dreams and ideas and to a person that's living on the street right now that's hungry, that doesn't know where their water's gonna come from, that don't have shoes on their feet. How do you apply those techniques? What would you say to that person? Well, to that person, I would say that to that person is they, they really want to, they really must want to have the change or want more. You have to want, want it. That desire must be strong because I was almost that person. I wasn't living on the street, but I had nothing. So you, you have to want it. You have to have a strong desire for change and for better. And, and you know, if you have that strong desire, you will go there, you will go out there and you will make things happen for you. Because we have to realize that, you know, as much as we have faith and as much as we pray and we, we love and serve God, the heavens aren't going to open and God is going to throw money in our lap or throw things on our lap. We have to get up and go get it. So we have to take the steps, you know? So, so it's, I'm telling you, desire will bring you anything, but you have to have a really strong desire and taking that action. So that person who's living on the street, if they want, if they don't want to be on the street anymore, they have to get up and say, this is it. I'm going to make life happen for me. I'm going to change my circumstances because we're the only ones who can change our circumstances. No one's going to change it. For us. And Brains, if you're in a position to be a person that can give a handout or a hand up, do that. Yes. You it have is no idea of the power of paying it forward, what that does for you, what that does for the other person. If you are the person that is homeless or listening to this podcast right now, okay? Because I got a whole homeless following, okay? Thank you. <laughs> uh, but like she said, you got to take ownership. Okay, this is where I am. This is my situation, but this is not my destination. Exactly. Okay, so you can move forward. It may be baby steps, and that's okay. One step at a time. Ask for help. Don't be too proud. You know, if you've got, you know, challenges, drugs, alcohol, bankruptcy, whatever it is, there's somebody else out there that's going through the same thing and they can help you. Exactly. Um, that 100%. It's good to ask for help. And I am more than happy to, like, I help out a lot of people. Like, I have a foundation. Sure. Um, and I, um, I will give free hypnosis to people who are in need of it. Like, I... 
I'm just, I'm all about helping and giving back. Well, so, because, I, I know what it was like. Yeah, you've been there. You know, I've been, been there. there. I know what it's like. So I don't want anyone to be there, I, you know? So I try to help as much as I can. It is, it is. But again, if you do not appreciate your past or where you came from, there's no way that you're going to be able to enjoy the fruit of your exactly. labor when you arrive. So please tell my brains how to get in contact with you, Rosetta Q. Uh, I love what you're doing. I love, you know, your energy and the type of work. Um, I love your story, everything about you and the work that you're doing there in Canada. I'm really hoping that this, you know, this is a, it's a cultural conversation. It, it just goes for anybody. But I really hope that you see two sisters' brains that are coming together that have been put under the secret spell of hypnosis and have found great favor in them. Do not be afraid. Do not be afraid. Do not be in contact with you. Well, you can, um, everyone, they can reach me on my website at uh, www.rosettaq.com. That's R O S E T T A Q.com. Or send me a message on Facebook. And yeah, or they can send me an email. Like uh, all the information is on my website. So. And I'm going to definitely put the link down at the bottom. Brains, I told you, I bring you the best and the brightest. I vet my guests. I make sure that they are the caliber of brain that you're looking for here on the edge, where the conversation is pointed, the guest is sharp, and the responses are never dull. Don't be shy, okay? Don't be shy. Don't stand there in the corner, you know, all by yourself. There's people out there that are willing to help you, that want to help you, that are smart, that are engaging. And I thank you so much for being on the edge with me and my brains today. Thank you so much for having me. It's, uh, it's been a pleasure. Yeah. Come on back. Come on back so we can have this conversation. I like to do uh, podcast potlucks where we kind of get a round table of people to really have a discussion and bring in some people that may have some fears, have some questions, or need That's some great. Yeah. Okay. Thank awesome. you so much. I love you. Love you. Bye, guys. Bye. Bye.